What's up, everybody? We're back here with Project Janito. And he decided to treat himself to an early Christmas present. Look at that. Little Buddy Club steering wheel. Pretty fly and fresh. Yeah, for all you FC2 owners, we're about to do a nice little video. Damn, this guy has black tint. Can't see anything. We're going to go ahead and swap this sucker out. We're going to bring you along for the ride. First things first, make sure that you align your steering wheel as straight as can be. And that's just so when you go ahead and you remove the existing steering wheel, you put the new one on. If you happen to put it on a tad bit crooked or whatever, you will be able to tell. Otherwise, if your wheels are crooked and you try and put it on straight, it's going to make it quite interesting driving down the road. So you're going to need a torque style T25. I don't know if you can see it. There it is. It's a T25. This takes out these two screws that hold the airbag in place. Once we get that out, I'll show you guys how to pry it off the airbag. And they said there's two little tabs here. You can see there's a wire right there. You don't want to pull out the airbag too hard because if you do, you're going to risk ripping all kinds of jazz. side once that comes out this is the back of the unit you're gonna need to remove that gray and green clip as well as the cable that goes hooked up right there for your horn and that's for your horn real easy came out look at it split let's just be careful make sure you don't damage it scratch it up but here it is ex exposed next we're gonna Go ahead and break that nut off. That's going to be your hardest one. Either we're going to use the breaker bar. Also, you have to go ahead and remove this white clip. See where you have to pull this clip out. Uh, that way, it doesn't interfere when you're pulling everything out. For reference, this guy controls all these lovely buttons on your car. Your volume and menus and your phone and whatnot. There's also a Phillips screw that's in there that's holding a little ground wire. We're loosening up all these cords first before we actually attempt to remove the big 10 millimeter nut that's right there with the impact wrench. This has a lot of torque in it though. Well, here it is. Solid. This is a big boy right here. It's girthy. All right, but y'all, we got it out. Let me show you what it looks like. So it's all out. That ground wire we were talking about goes right in there. And now we're going to just make sure that all these K 
cables and whatnot don't get pinched when we pull out the steering wheel. All right, all right, all right. We got the steering wheel removed. If it doesn't come out smoothly, uh, the tip we got is to bang it on either side, just with your palms here and here. Just bang it, bang it, bang, and then it should slide right out. This is also key when you go ahead and reinstall. What was that again, Jonathan? Make sure that this is straight with your plug-in straight at noon and you got your uh, nine o'clock bolt here, which should mount directly in the back of the steering wheel to here. So when you install it, this bolt here should go directly into there, which will line it up being straight. I'll take note of that because I don't want you guys running down the road with the crooked steering wheel and then blaming me for it. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and remove these four screws that we're pointing out right here. This will loosen up the housing that's in the rear. All this will come off and then we'll get to the fun part. Simple Phillips screwdriver will remove all of this. So don't get cheeky guys. So you gotta pop those two tabs out right here. And then down in here, this is rubber, like kind of hard rubber. According to all the instructions we've seen, you just gotta go for it. You gotta push that out. Yep. There you go. Okay. So easiest way, boys, was to pop these out. Once you do that, you lay this thing flat. You pull on the housing up. You're going to hear like a crack. It allows this space to open up right here. And there, you have enough leverage to pull this sucker out. Once you pull it out, you're gonna have this blue tab here and you're gonna have another one, I believe on the other side. You're gonna wanna release those in order to get the actual plastic housing out. Take your time again, try not to mess it up. All right, boys. So for the uh, regular guys like you and I with type bars and SIs and whatnot, we're gonna have a blue and a white one. But for your FC2 owners, because you guys have these nifty paddle shifters, you guys are gonna have two sets of blue ones and two sets of white ones. Now, the first two, we got them out with the little trusty pick tool. We're gonna do that again. Uh, you know, you guys can use like a screwdriver or whatnot to, to you know, depress the tab. I'd advise to use the pick tools that way. You guys don't damage anything. Because remember, all this has to go back in. Boom, see what I'm saying? If you don't have paddles, you're only gonna have these two up here. But if you have paddles, you're gonna have these and these extra guys here. These guys are for your paddles. So this is the rear housing. Again, super easy. We just used a pick tool and a 90 degree one. But again, told you guys, you guys follow the videos. These were clutch. Jonathan was saying that at Harbor Freight, they got a pack of these for like a dollar. Go and get yours. Nothing better than having the right tools for the job. All right, boys, so next thing on the agenda is to remove this center piece here. And we've already pried it out a little bit, but I just wanted to show you guys what we actually did. Here is this plastic piece. You can see it right there, that gray one. That's out. We just used a screwdriver and we went ahead and just pushed it in slowly. Make sure that you have enough clearance down here so when it pops out, it doesn't, you know, push back on itself. But Nito is gonna continue pulling that out. And it's super easy. Again, just be careful with removing those, those pieces. So for the FC2 spearing wheel, it's just gonna be the center one for uh, I believe other models, it might be these two and this one here. But we just pushed on this guy and it came out no problem. This one was sketch level 10, I must say. And again, if you're watching this video and you're doing your homework, I would definitely, definitely say invest in some pick tools. This is a 2020 model FC2. 
Again, some of the videos that we've seen did not require this to be taken out. It all came out in one piece, but this one is requiring it. I think it's because of the paddle shifters. The way that we were able to get this going was first of all, as you see right there, you gotta pry those out. You gotta push them out with like a screwdriver, like I said, and then slowly, and when I mean slowly, you're going to want to release these two tabs here, kind of create some space for these tabs see those and that's where this pick tool comes in clutch because you, you the way we came at it was underneath the steering wheel like this and pushed in enough to press the clip out and to help us get it out again i don't see how you would be able to take these out without a pick tool i'm sure there's other ways um, we started from the top this way came around and when we got to here this long piece has to come out so either you pry it you wiggle it out or you just kind of put enough pressure on it I would just wiggle it out with the pry tool because it, it worked out a lot easier this is how we were working it and we worked it this way again underneath the steering wheel so that way you wouldn't make any marks on the plastic or at least try to do the minimal amount of marks oh boy this was a royal pain in the rear and we still have this one to go all right guys so this is this is a mission here and again the right tools will make the job a little easier again we have the plastic little trim tool pieces that we got we use this to pry this out this one was a pain this one was way harder and this one was the easiest one so again, it goes in this order. Whoa, excuse me. Wow, that was rude. Uh, this goes in this order, guys. We pried out this piece first. Then with the collaboration of this one and this guy using this piece here, we dug it in here, kind of gave it some leverage. And then with this guy from the rear, go ahead and lift this here. Anywho, so this guy from the rear, like so, I was pushing it, so I was pushing it while Jonathan was using this pry tool, the thin part, to push and get enough angle, as you can see how this guy is, is at an angle, to slide it out this way, okay? Don't try and go straight up, because it's gonna be hard, we learned that, it's gonna come at an angle. And once that comes out, these two guys slide out but we did use the pry tools every step of the way, again, to not damage the existing leather on the steering wheel or to damage anything down here. To remove the paddle shifter, I was mistaken because I had seen these tiny little screws in there. I thought we'd need a re to remove those, but actually it's quite the contrary. All you need to do is just take this guy off, which is right there. And once it comes off, the whole assembly removes. Now, Jonathan's gonna try and do this part Again, we're gonna start with this corner, which is this guy here. Once you get that guy off, we're gonna attempt to, to pry it this way. So you're gonna go that way to pry it. There it is. Three minutes flat, boys. Took us 15 the first time. And that's that screw I was talking about. That removes it to remove the paddle shifter assembly. And remember, just take your time with this, boys. You don't wanna break this. As you can see, no damage, nothing broken. Cause you got these little little guys here that you also want to be careful when you're using the pry tools see no damage to any of them and even best of all no damage to the steering wheel everything looks good 
Now we're gonna get to assembling the buddy club one, which is what you all been waiting for. Okay, we're going to start with the paddle shifters first, which the buddy club steering wheel does provide all the necessary holes for it. Okay, so paddle shifters are back in. Fitment looks good. Screws points were right in the same spot as the other one. Now we're gonna put these fun guys back in. See if we can get it done in real time here. These go in super easy. Remember, the fitment is not the same as the stock steering wheel. So remember, these will not like push in completely. They will not be flush because the Buddy Club steering wheel here is thinner. Once you do install the silver piece, once you install this and you button it all down, then the gaps should close up and be flush. So don't trip out, don't try and push this in when it doesn't need to go all the way in. Just make sure that everything is, is back in there, nice and tight, you know, the, 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 it's not loose. There's these little tabs, dude, that I'll be pushing in. Yeah. And then these little ones that snap onto the end. Same order as before. Just make sure that you're gentle and you're not forcing anything super hard as to break anything when you're reinstalling all these plastic pieces because they're really thin and once again last thing you need is to break anything once you've come this far and see there is a gap there as you can see but once we snap all the pieces back into place all of that should go away and what i mean by that is see here these guys still need to get pushed back in once they get pushed in this should close the gap all right guys once you got it in this position here see how there's gaps there tiny ones around here, right in here. What you're gonna do is lay it on there and you're gonna want to hold it in this position. See how my hands are wrapped around both pieces of the plastic? And that's so, again, you're not applying pressure in just one spot and risk breaking it. So that's why you just push down on both sides and you snap into place. We already did it here and see how the fitment is nice and seamless we still actually we need to push down here but see how it's getting seamless from minimal pressure but that's because we're wrapping our hands in this position like so and snapping it in Okay, so see here, see that, and here. These things, they're not flimsy, but they're not real strong either. And if you install it this way, it's gonna make it very hard to get it in. Easiest way is to go in here first, get these guys in, and then snap it down into place. Again, you don't wanna break those. They're pretty, uh, pretty thin. Okay, again, once you have these guys in, there is also another tab that this has to go over right here. Make sure you align these guys in first and then you bring this part down. We uh, did these two first, 
push this down and notice that this part was still not aligned, but it was easy enough to where we could lift it and push it in. I would advise to get these in first and then snap the back part in. These are rubber pieces here, so they, there is a little bit of give when you're pushing this part down. But again, take your time, go slow. All right, finished product. We just need to get the airbag back in and we'll be looking good. Like I said, paddles fit perfect. So for you guys that have the paddles, there is no issues whatsoever. Fitment is 100% on everything here. As you can tell, everything fits nice. Yeah, buddy club, good job. Don't forget your order of operations when you have your paddles. If this is a non-paddle, all you're gonna do is you're gonna put this guy and this one in, these two big guys. If you have paddles, it's the smaller ones that go into the paddle assembly, and these guys are out further out. And yeah, you're gonna want to bring all those wires and whatnot through this actual main little hole. Let me see right here, John. See that little hole right there? You're gonna wanna make sure that all these wires clear this, and these are gonna go in their respective places. Make sure you align them before you start trying to put this plastic part in. If not, you may pinch a wire, and last thing you need is to fray something. everything just about buttoned up on the steering wheel and the positioning for that negative cable like I told you it's right there make sure that the wire is looped in here because you want to make sure that negative that ground is up uh, that ground cord excuse me is properly secured that way it's not dangling everywhere again don't get cheeky and use <laughs> Power tool just requires a little elbow grease. That's about it. Okay, and last but not least, we're gonna put in the screws back in. These four, remember the ones we took out at the beginning. Two up the top, two on the bottom. For reference, there and there. And again, guys, just want to remind you when it comes to the fitment here in the back. You may have a little bit of a gap or whatnot prior to putting in the screws. Don't try to keep forcing anything because there's really no clips here. Everything will get tightened up once you put in these screws. We had a little bit of a gap that was causing some concern here. But once we put the screws in, as you could tell, flawless. It's looking proper. Okay, we're putting on the steering wheel. You want to make sure this bolt matches up this hole back here. You can't miss it. When we took the steering wheel off, obviously it was straight. So to get these cords here, go ahead and put them through. It's gonna wiggle around, but don't get worried because once you put this uh, steering wheel on, it's gonna stay where you took it off at. Make sure it's nice and straight in the back. Get your white plug. Put it right back in, like so. Easy set and done. Uh, ready for the airbag. All right, y'all, now we're gonna go ahead and put in the center bolt that goes to the steering wheel.
last but not least are the torque screws that go here and on the other side don't forget these because these are going to hold your airbag in place once we get those down and tight i'll go ahead and give you guys a shot from inside again remember when i was telling you guys take your time make sure that you do it right that way you don't break anything bend any pins or anything like that when you're putting the clips back in because that's also important but otherwise than that steering wheel feels great fitment for the paddles is perfect and spot on like i told you also just a quick note the buddy club steering wheel is the same radius as the stock one only thing you got a difference is down here this little you know flat part but again that's what it's there for i mean again you're gonna use this thing to go racing so if that's the case you need it for the leg space down below as you can see right here but otherwise great product didn't take too long to install we'll see you guys again thanks again for watching don't forget to hit that button that says subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell so that way you know when we post more videos i'll catch you guys around stay safe everyone